It's time for the show that brings the magic right to your speakers. Ears up! Hey, what's up, everybody? Ears up. We are back in the studio, in the virtual studio here. To talk a little bit about my second favorite treat. And, uh, you know, we're all basically big churro heads over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love a good turkey leg. Mm. I I don't eat them often because it is sort of um, an adventure to eat like that in front of people. Well, and it's also kind of weird because it's sort of enough for a whole meal. But then your whole meal is one thing. (laughs) Yeah, well, And it's just meat. It's just yeah. meat, and it's very yeah. salty, and it's kind of expensive. So you really have to share it with a few people, but you can only share it with very close people because of the way that you eat it. It's a very unique treat. <laughs> it, it, treat. it really is, man. I wonder if it's the best value dinner-wise, like meal-wise. You know what I mean? Because what is it, like eight, nine bucks? No. It's, oh. like, it's like 15. Oh. Yeah, it was 11 seven years ago. Yeah. So <laughs> but that, that was the first time you complained about it. All right, fair enough. Because I think you were like, this was $8. Yeah. Well, see, there you go. I still thought <laughs> yeah. it was $8. At least huh. you're consistent. Yeah, I live in the past. Okay, that's what I do. But I like a turkey leg. I wish that there wasn't any cholesterol or in there or anything. I would eat more. I'd eat more of everything if it didn't have well, yeah, cholesterol and calories and yeah. sugar and... and ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. But Eric is going to take us through the history of the turkey leg, which sounds weird. Until you think about the turkey legs just weren't there in the park one day. And where are all these turkeys coming from? See, exactly. And I've Does also it... heard all the rumors where it's like, well, you know, they're genetically modified <laughs> uh, ostriches, actually. And that's why they're so darn big. Because yeah. everything has to be, you know, there's a reason for it, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, So Eric's going to exactly. take us through that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit to Bev about her recent trip to Disneyland. And uh, Ter- uh, Terrence, uh, Eric, you were just there recently with Terrence, right? No, we, we, it, it is, is, is now late December. Oh, because God, if, if, if it's late December now, then yes, Terrence and I were just at Disneyland. I mean, we can call it late December if that means you have something to say about it. No, they're no, going I, to December. They're whatever. Uh, I yeah. thought you already went and you're going back. Uh, no, no, no. I, I uh, met up with Terrence in uh, my, my homeland of, uh carardo no oh. and um yeah nice all right well that then never it. mind man that, you, yeah. then you can't talk about it but bev will yeah, talk a little bit about her that trip. story bev, is you, done yeah you did go to disneyland right bev i'm not i'm not i did i was crazy. there last week somebody yes. went with terrence but you no. didn't go to you didn't with terrence i don't know what's I, going on i went with abby <laughs> who but fair i don't know what's going on Anyway, and then we have a segment from Tam. We have another Who Dat. Mm-hmm. We have to find music for that. So that'll be fun. And then we got some news. There's actually some pretty good. Um, get it all out, Bev. I'm sorry, I yeah. can't. Um, <laughs> like, the telling myself this. Get, I didn't yawn out. into the microphone. I was off. It's back here. Eh. <laughs> I heard it. Sorry. Anyway, we, um, we all heard it. It's fine. I'm surprised you didn't feel it. <laughs> was like, that was a big one. You, you, you almost got me on that one. Oh, man. We're all just going to go, yeah, I'm sort of fighting one now, too, Bev. Thanks. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Going through this thing with Alice, or at least not so much anymore, but uh, where she would, like, fake yawn. And it's like, you know she's fake yawning because it's like she'll do eight of them in a row, and it's just very exaggerated, and then she's looking at you for a reaction. Stop oh, fake no. yawning. And then I start doing it back to her. And then I'm, and then it makes me actually yawn. If I start fake yawning, then I'm actually yawning. So we're both going. No, there, there's oh. science behind that. As soon as you fake said the word real, as soon yeah. as you said the word yawn, I felt the need to yawn again. I, right. I want to yawn right now. <laughs> I think we all should. Let's take a yawn break. Oh my god. Okay. <sighs> I was trying this whole time to fight it. See, that was not. This is not good. <laughs> no, this is therapy. Yeah, it's Taryn. <laughs> Taryn, that's embrace se- it. Yeah, that second one. To this. That second one was real. And we're not, we're back. We're refreshed. We're ready to go. Speaking of Alice, we got to go to her school today for um, to like sit in the, on the class to observe. To observe, and Ooh. it was it was weird because we've never really gotten a, a, a straight answer out of her as to what they actually do in class, and it's like you know Montessori or whatever, and it's like it sounds really. I don't know, high education or like, you know, there's a lot of research or there's a lot of intention with what they do. 
But we go there, and she only goes for the second half of the class, and they just, like, sort of Gatling gun information at them while they're sitting on this blue line. And mm-hmm. it's like, here are the days of the week, and then here's how we say them. We say them in Spanish now, too, and then here's the day, and then we say the thing, and then we... And it's like, I couldn't even keep up, and I'm very smart. Yeah. And it, so I wonder if it's just a bunch of, like, let's cover them in a... I'm going to put a blanket on them, a blanket of information, where so they're just so... Shell shock, they can't move and, and, and <laughs> fart around. W- were they just acting for like that specific day? Like no, most I of the week, they're like, so. here's a block, <laughs> yeah. put it on the other one. And I don't want to hear a word out of you. I don't think so because when she does tell us about school, she's like, um, we're like, what did you learn? She goes, the days of the week. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you told us that yesterday. Like, what did you learn today? The days of the week. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, whatever. I guess she's just not going to tell us. But I yeah. think that's literally what they learn every day. And I'm like, they're just repetitive, like over and over and over. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, now it's in, uh, it's in like Szechuan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and, that's not and, a language. No, it's not. But I know what you were talking about. You're talking about Mandarin. It's a ch- chicken. Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mandarin Sorry. is a chicken. Szechuan I apologize. Is a chicken too. Yeah. I've offended so many people already in this episode. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um. Yeah, it was uh it was it was very strange. Um Yeah, it was it was odd because yeah, she it is a lot of repetitive stuff. It was also and kind of boring. It's kind of well, yeah, it was boring. We we knew everything. We were the smart well, kids no, in the class well, like, for once. I can understand why recess is her favorite subject. Oh, yeah. It it <laughs> it took me in, immediately back to being in elementary school or even high school. Or I'm just like, I can't wait to get outside. I can't wait for this to be over. See, I wasn't that kid, and I, I felt it. that way hated in this it. class. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I loved it. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of weird. No, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, it was odd, man. It was odd. Mm. Um. Bizarre. Whatever. Great. I had a I had, a, I had an idea, and you guys derailed me twice. And I'm upset about yes, it. Yes, it's our fault. I'm gonna cry about it. Yeah. Talking about how weird it was. Uh, yeah, whatever. Who cares? It left. Okay. Do, a... do you just need me to talk for a little while to no, it's fill fine. some space? It's fine. But there was there was a kid in there, and so it's like like preschool and kindergarten, sort of in one like room or session or whatever. And there was a kid in there that like definitely looked like he should smell like weed. Oh yeah. Like he just <laughs> he just had this <laughs> sort of like braided ponytail, a puffer jacket, a black puffer jacket. Um, baggy jeans that were below his butt, um, black He's shoes that were a little too big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, his hair like slicked back with a ponytail. And I'm just like, this kid, he, he needs to smell like, uh, Mike Marlboro lights and, and weed. Like I just, I, I get that from him, at least in middle school, yeah. he's going to be where you're going to go, you know, get your first joint from. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I, but I felt bad for the kid too, because he was like, in this circle time or the square time, I guess they were on this blue line square thing. Anyway, the kid kept trying like scooting closer to the teacher. Yeah. And at that moment, I was like, oh man, this is where all of this starts. This is where all of that were like the troublemaker kid because he was sort of a, making trouble or at least mm-hmm. not making trouble, but not paying attention as well. Oh. And he started scooting more toward the teacher and then he would look up at the teacher and he was more engaged, but the teacher sort of was moving him back to where he was. And it's like, I can very, I can see this kid's, the rest of his scholastic career. <laughs> and I feel very bad for everybody running detention. Like, it's just, it's just going to be bad. He clearly just wants some one-on-one time, a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more love, a little bit more attention, a little bit more. Yeah. I just felt bad for the kid, man. It's weird Aww. to see that. It's weird to see that happen. I That's also sad. felt bullied. Yeah. I was like, this kid's going to pick on me. <laughs> I can't get near this child. He's going to beat me up. <laughs> Steal your lunch money, dude. Yeah, I know exactly. Um, but it was it was you know it was cool. It was neat to see, and um, it was cool to see that kid. It was cool to see that kid. It was super cool. Yeah, it's a trip because when the kids have to go to the bathroom, like there's no door. <laughs> there's no they door. Just they just go, and and where we're sitting, you it's just the bathroom's <laughs> right there. So you're just like not looking, yeah. but you're you can hear it. Well, Did they just like, have a wall with like a. Yeah. There's like no trough. door. There's no, no door, but it's like it's like um it's like a rectangular room mm-hmm. with no door, but so it has walls. It's just there's an d- empty doorway, which makes sense, I guess. But like you know, I'm sitting there and I didn't even know him was in there, and I'm like looking around the room, like whatever. And then I look up and I just see this kid's ass. He's just 
He pulled oh, his pants yeah. all the way down. And There's he's always a kid who... And it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. This so, is so communal. You're <laughs> yeah. describing Wrigley Field. <laughs> <laughs> it to was, any, uh, any Chicagoans. Man, it was wild. Yeah. It was uh, it was a good time, I guess. Weird. I don't know. I hate school. I hated being there for the most part. I liked seeing Alice engage and stuff, but like, it reminded me, I just I was a terrible student, hated school, never wanted to go back, still never want to go back. I don't want to even learn anything about it. You, were you triggered? Kind of, yeah. Mm. Sorry about that. I, I was like triggered the other way. I was like, they're not doing enough. This school is not school. <laughs> <laughs> where, where is all of the school? Not. Where's the learning? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the thing I was going to say. So every month they learn about a new composer. Oh. Then I say learn, they're exposed to it, but it's in that like shotgun effect of here's all the information in the first half an hour. The composer information is buried in there, so she's not like retaining anything. But so she's not her... learning about Schubert? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the other one was um, Vivaldi was last month. And this month we go, hey, so what's your, uh, what's the composer? Mozart. I'm like, oh, Mozart? No, Mozart. No, Alice, it's it's Mozart. There's like a T, like the Z, and it sort of sounds the same. It's a J- Austrian, you know, whatever. That doesn't sound right, Daddy. <laughs> that doesn't sound right to me. Mm. Well, okay. Well, my teacher says Mozart, and so I like look it up and I play it for, her, and you know, it says like Mozart, and it's pretty you know, pronounced properly. I go, see. She's like, no. <laughs> my teacher says <laughs> Mozart. I'm like, well, she has like an accent, so she probably. So we're there in class, and the teacher goes, okay, now we're going to learn about our composer. What's his name? Mozart. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> wow. God. Wait until they get to uh, Michael Jack Cheese, um, oh. the, the, the latest Disney composer star. Beverly, what are you doing? I can't get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you should mute your microphone because it sounds like it's snowing. I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was picking it up. You can't hear that? You can't hear uh, your microphone? Really? Not oh at all. Oh, my God. If you heard your microphone, it would be a whole different world for you. You hate me so much right now. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's like, why is there static going on? Oh, it's just Bev moving her blanket 12 feet away. Uh, I'm going to send you my audio separately, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Just be still on, on mute most of the time. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> no, Bev, you sound great. Yeah, you sound great. All right, Taryn, you ready? Oh, me, sure. Me, sure. Oh, me, so ready. <laughs> Hold on a second. That's not Uh-oh. me. <laughs> I should have just kept it going, honestly. Who that? Who's 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 that? All right, Taryn, who's that? All right. Well, usually for this segment, I focus on a sort of like background character and I see if I can find anything out about them. Um, But this time I'm making a slight digression. Uh, There is a character in the Disney universe who has always confused me. When I see him on the screen or in a book, I have so many questions and Disney never seems to want to answer any of them. So Uh I set out to find out what I could about Goofy's son. Oh, (gasps) Max. Max Goof. Max Million, I think is his name, right? Max Million. Yeah. See, there you go. That's all you need to know. He's a cool hipster dude, and that's it. So it's believed by many that Max Goof uh, first appeared in the 1951 short Fathers Are People. Uh Oh, many are saying this. And uh, in this film, it was, or this was a short, and um, it was under the name Goofy Jr. And in this short, Jr. is born. And we watch as a sharply dressed Goofy Mm. copes with fatherhood. At one point, he even wakes in the middle of the night to make a bottle but instead makes himself a martini and falls asleep in the kitchen. Yep. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go, Goofy. Sounds like the 50s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oddly, um, in this short, our silly friend is never referred to as Goofy. Not once. His name is George. And his unnamed wife calls out to him uh, to help out with the new baby throughout. And so much of this is strange to me because first off, Goofy's wearing a suit um, and he has a normal voice. It's not that gurgly kind of Goofy voice. Mm-hmm. And second, his name is George, not Goofy. And third, he has a wife. 
Now, I'm having a hard time believing that this is goofy at all. Right. Uh, to me, this is like saying Oswald is the original Mickey Mouse. He's not. Maybe he was the first inspiration for what we now know is Mickey Mouse, but no one would say Oswald is Mickey. That's just not what would happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they are com two completely different characters. So for this reason, George from 1951 is not Goofy. Thus, Goofy Jr. is not Max Goof. They are different people. So then huh. who is Max Goof? This so is it wouldn't even be Goofy Jr. Then it'd be George Jr. Right. Right. It's so confusing. Yeah. And so Interesting. This is, all, this is all my theory. This is not probably true, but this is my theory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Then who is Max? Uh, Max is actually first introduced as an 11 and a half year old boy in the TV show Goof Troop. This makes more sense. Uh, this is when he moves in with his father, Goofy. Okay. Max is a typical middle school aged boy whose antics often revolve around trying to gain popularity or trying to find uh, an easy way out of doing things. Same. Things like that. Um, while he's often embarrassed by his father's actions, they ultimately have a close relationship. Mm, not same. So why is Max interesting? Max is the only Disney character who actually grows in age. So if hmm. we keep with my theory that Max is not in fact Goofy Jr., then we meet Max at age 11. Then he's uh, seen in a Christmas uh, special. Uh, I forget the name of it, and I did not write it down, but we watch it all the time. Anyway. Scrooged. No. Christmas vacation. No. Mm. Uh, so he's in a, a, it's a Mickey Christmas, like, conglomeration of a bunch of different shorts, and he's in one of them. Oh, is it Mickey's Christmas? No. Oh. Um, and in this, he's a young boy <laughs> dealing with his kind of wavering belief in Santa Claus. Okay. Then, All right. All right. then in a Goofy movie, Max is a high school-aged teenager with an innate fear of becoming like his father. Here we see him even with a love interest and a much more teenagery angst against his you know silly dad then next we see him as a high school graduate in an extremely goofy movie and then finally we see uh we see max as a young adult mm. in both uh, house of mouse where he's employed as a parking valet and mickey's twice upon a christmas where he prepares to bring his girlfriend home to meet his dad goofy so the first one was once upon a christmas though. yes right. so we actually watch him grow up and progress as as a character which is not something you see in any other character that I could think of, except it's maybe. very slow, but it yes. is yeah. slow. Yes, um, except <laughs> it's interesting though. Yeah. So what's also interesting about Max is that he is the son of a main Disney character. Now Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Daisy, they all have nephews and nieces, but no children of their own. Goofy, however, is different. Goofy has a child, so but the least responsible and but most... no significant other. Right. There, he's the craziest character, and this guy procreated, but how? His, well, his wife has shown up in various things, though, no. but she's never fully depicted. You generally just see what looks like human legs. Like She's like Jessica Rabbit sitting in a chair that's but facing away from you, right? That is only if we're talking about Junior. Goofy oh. Junior. Oh. If we're talking about just Max, my version, which is just starting at goof troop okay. there is no mom hmm. okay there is no mom so so basically my questions are who is max's mom is goofy married is he widowed what is happening here right so there are a few theories out there um one and this goes back to the 1950s but one is that mrs goofy cheated on goofy with the milkman in the 1950s cartoon and goofy left her now this theory is here because in uh what what, a, what a, in one in one of the shorts yeah, okay okay goofy, goofy takes the day off of work uh -huh. to help out his wife and when the milkman arrives the milkman drops he opens the door the milkman drops the milk down and gives goofy a big old kiss on the lips because he assumed it was the wife because the wife is always home hmm. so that sparked this theory that mrs goofy cheated on goofy however i don't even believe that's the same those are the same characters so another for me more plausible theory is that she's simply dead um and since goofy has because in these goofy has full custody of max there's never once a mention of a motherly figure at all in any of the movies that have my version of max in it 
So it's safe to assume that there is no mother involved at all. And in fact, if you dive down too deep into these theories, you find Goofy to be an actually really tragic character whose entire family has likely died and who now relies solely on his son, Max, to provide him with the safety and security that you expect to receive from family. And this puts a lot of pressure on Max. And if you ask me, um, that's probably created a pretty codependent relationship between the two, <laughs> which is probably why they have such a contentious relationship. Uh, okay. Huh. What rabbit hole did you go down? <laughs> wow. So you, okay, so Max went, he moved in with Goofy at age 11. Mm -hmm. But where, where was he before? So Goofy and his wife had to have been divorced at the time. Exactly. Yeah. There's literally, they yeah. don't ever mention it. They look through scrapbooks. He never asks. No questions ever arise from Max. Nobody says anything about mommy. I don't like it. It's weird. Mm. It, it's, mm. And Disney has actually spoken about it. Like it was on an FAQ for a while and I was going to pull it up, but it was very boring. But basically they're like, <laughs> like they're like, it's a cartoon. We don't really know either, but maybe mm. it will be discussed on a future something. What a that stupid was, answer. It was a dumb answer, which is why I didn't. Well, I mean, them. I guess like where did Huey, Dewey and Louie come from? That means that means that Donald has a brother. Mm hmm. But I think that that's all mentioned somewhere at some point. Is it? Yeah. No, his brother or sister are never mentioned. No, it is a sister. Actually, I did read that today. Oh. It's a sister. And, and she dies. The name. Her name is like De Della, Della something. They call her Della. Duck, I Duck. would imagine. Her name was Dum Dumbella. And they, <laughs> Dumbella. They did, and they shortened it to Della because that sounded stupid. So, like, there is an actual story there. Huh. Uh, I'm going to call you Dumbella now. But Max uh, I've got to rewatch the entirety of both <laughs> series of DuckTales now. There you go. See, there's just, there's no information about Max's mom or Goofy's hmm. significant other or whatever. Chip, get on that. We need a Disney Plus, a full rundown Disney Plus series about Max's history. We need a full background, please. <laughs> All right, so where else have you seen him? Max is in a ton of stuff. He's in a ton of films, a ton of TV shows. He's not a main character. Oh, so he's working. He's a working he's actor. A working That's good. Actor. All right. Mm -hmm. But you would definitely recognize him from Goof Troop or a Goofy movie. And he also has cameos in a lot of Disney video games and park attractions like Fantasmic and a, most of the parades, like a handful of the parades, a couple handfuls. So, <laughs> a, cu a couple handfuls. <laughs> couple from handfuls. most to a couple handfuls. Uh, so who's behind the character? In the 1950s cartoon, Goofy Jr. was played by Bobby Driscoll, who played Johnny in Song of the South. And mm. he was both the voice and the close-up model for 1953's Peter Pan. Ooh. So that's interesting. That is interesting. Oh, that's so, um, okay. This is my favorite. So he's, he's a svelte individual. And small and, and young. <laughs> okay. Yes. So later on um, in Goof Troop, the real Max Goofy, um, was voiced by actress Dana Hill. Okay. Now, you may recognize her as the voice of Buddy in The Adventures of Gummy Bears or Tank mm. Muddlefoot in Darkwing Duck. Mm. But more notably, she is Audrey Griswold in National Lampoon's European Vacation. Oh, Okay. Now, if you look her up, you will know exactly who I'm talking about. Dana Hill. Yeah. In European Vacation. I think I've yes. seen that once and I didn't care about it. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's so good. They're all so good. Oh, yeah. But didn't she? <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. So finally, James Marsden is the current voice of Max. And he's oh. one of those faces where you go, not, I'm sorry, not James. Jason Marsden. Oh, okay. I'm like, oh, wait, James Marsden. I'm like, Holy I was like, cow. I know that one. And they are not related, uh, okay. but they are best friends, oddly. Uh, no, so sorry. Jason Marsden is the current voice of Max, and he's one of those faces where you go, oh, he's that guy from, from that show. You know, that guy. Um, he played the cat, Thackeray Binks, in Jason's favorite movie, Hocus Pocus. Yeah. <laughs> he had recurring roles on Full House, Boy Meets World and Step by Step. So everybody who grew up during those totally recognizes this guy. And he's, he's a late 90s king. Totally. 
And he's been a voice actor on a handful of other Disney animated films and lots of DC comic inspired animated series and video games. So in conclusion, Max, while not totally unfamiliar in the Disney universe, has a relatively unknown history and potentially tragic backstory. And what I learned from researching Max is that he and Goofy probably need a lot of therapy. Mm. True. Mm. So that's Max Goof. Who's that? Who's that? Now I'm like Who's looking that? up this uh, <clears throat> Dana Hill broad. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Why? Who's that? Well, I don't know, because he told me to. <laughs> um, she was on she was on an episode of Magnum PI, which is uh, makes her more uh, recognizable to me. Uh, she was on an episode of The Fall Guy. Um, she was, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. Jetson's I have the nothing movie, else to say about that. <laughs> Darkwing Duck, Tom and Jerry Kids. You know, good for her, man. <laughs> Doing some stuff. A couple of CBS uh, afternoon specials. Hmm. You know. The Flintstone Kids Just Say No Special. She was a character called Stoney. <laughs> Gee, what were they talking about, I wonder? <laughs> I don't know. Very cool, man. I love it. Uh, you know, I was doing some uh, <clears throat> some reminiscing, some um, uh, looking back at our uh, our numbers. People really liked our Halloween special, our story, oh, our, our Halloween stories thing, and I I liked it too. I had a good time, man. Good. Yeah, Bev, thank you very much for all your work. Yes, Bev, go ahead, please. Dana Hill also is dead. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Way to bring it down. Yeah. You're welcome. I just googled that. I was like, oh. Speaking yeah, of knows. Halloween episodes, yeah. <laughs> well, I couldn't find any um, recent pictures, and I was like, she looks the same. Because yeah. she gone. Because she gone. <laughs> well, I, I, well you, you stepped on my intro. I was going to bring on a psychic. We're going to do a reading. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but Eric, you wanted to, uh, you know, you want to express your feelings a little bit about the, uh, the Halloween show. I, I imagine how much fun it was and thanking me profusely for allowing you to do it oh my goodness uh, you know what i i've i i paid you so much to be on this show <laughs> yeah and uh the bitcoin came through just fine okay that's yeah. that's great it's not um, worth less though but e e i mean elon delivered it to you himself didn't he <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah, i was buried in his uh hair plugs at a pull one out yeah yeah mm. anyway I, I just wanted to say, I, well, I'm glad that the the show went well. Um, I was really looking forward to it. But as somebody who has been um, in healthcare for like 20 years, yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to to kind of put put this out there as a a uh, sort of a it, put this on other people to 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 say that you can advocate for yourself. I was not in a great place during that episode. Mm. Um, as multiple people mentioned during the episode, <laughs> I seemed like I might have been uh, drunk. And yeah. having had uh, one drink before and one drink after the mm -hmm. episode, I can say I was not, but I was on drugs. <laughs> um, Drugs. I was hot. Yeah, we mentioned it on the secret show, but we didn't bring yeah. it for uh, for and, you know the other uh, uh, listening audience. And, and that was it. You know, yeah. it it's it, it's tough. Like I, I get that healthcare in the U.S. is it's not it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to kind of use my own example, uh, to inspire people to to push themselves a bit more. Because I've, you know, during during the course of this this whole thing, basically, I had an MRI today, literally today. Finally, after ten weeks of pain, I wow. finally had an MRI done. And on um, your butt, because you have a torn butt still. I don't. Oh no, I don't. Okay. All right. I ha I have a uh, I I have a fairly severe disc perf uh uh. uh not perfusion. protrusion it, protrusion rupture That's the word okay yeah wow Ooh. yeah Yikes. so this is going to take a lot more physical therapy and it's going to take some injections and hopefully i won't end up in surgery um 
And a lot of this comes from, I mean, thankfully, I have a brother-in-law who is, who is actually, like, he's an orthopedic surgical PA. So he's helped me through this. And I have not leaned on him much before now because it, it's been like, no, let's let, let's let healthcare take its thing. My, my point to the listeners is essentially don't, don't just let healthcare happen. If you are in pain, if you are in emotional pain, please seek out, um, seek out resources. There are things that are out there. If, if you need, if you need emotional therapy, if you need mental, if you need to talk to somebody, there are, there are media out there that like betterhelp.com that is covered under a lot of different insurance plans. Um, Push your insurance plan, find out what your benefits are and use those benefits push things harder than I did. Cause I was like, let's just see how this plays out. That was wrong. Um, as I talked to my brother today, he's saying, uh, yeah, you probably should have found out about this like six weeks ago. And it would have been a different, a different prognosis. Wow. And, and that's it. Like I, I, I've, I've spent weeks, I've spent months basically like, doped up on muscle relaxers that have screwed up my memory. Uh, I keep trying different things. They, they, they mess with my memory. They m- mess with my ability to do my work. Wow. They mess with my ability to, to write and create. And these are things that I love doing. I haven't been able to do the things that I've loved doing. And I've kind of gotten by in some cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last episode, maybe, well, I guess it was you okay. Did, you did the thing. Mm-hmm. I did the thing. Great. I'm I, I I'm glad you thought that I did the thing. Well, it happened. I heard it. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so this is no this is no shade on any of like my my healthcare providers. This is on me, and this is on on you as listeners. Please, if you like my my the job that pays me money. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I work in a job that shouldn't exist. We we work to basically get your insurance to pay for things like chemotherapy, rheumatoid arthritis, um, it, in injections, all of these all of these expensive specialty therapies that that cost thousands of dollars a month, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Like mm-hmm. it, it, my my job is to run a team of more than 50 people who, who do this. They work with your insurance company in, in this health system that I work in. And their, their job is to, to, to find ways to make this affordable for you as a person. My job shouldn't exist. Their job shouldn't exist. Right. Healthcare is crazy. So this is not this is not anti healthcare in the U.S. This is not anti. I mean, it's a little anti insurance, but <laughs> um, we shouldn't but, need it. Is I think what you're saying. We need the it, infrastructure. Exactly. Yeah. So the whole point is for me to say to you, uh, I'm in a much better place today, literally Good. right now, yeah. because I have finally gotten the care that I need and my pain levels have gone from like nine where I'm like shaking constantly down to like a a, a reasonable level where like oh okay well my back kind of hurts today Mm. that's great yeah if you need help please seek out that help advocate for yourself um if you as a patient complain if you push against your insurance company, you're the one who pays these bills. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. I, yes, I have a team that do this, this work for patients, but you know what really gets the, the, the trick done, but what gets the job done is, is the people who pay premiums, the people who are paying into, into insurance, you as a patient, yeah. this is a, 
big deal. If your medications are too expensive, talk to your provider, look for alternatives. If your wait times are too long, please ask what alternatives there are. I guarantee there are other places you can go, other, other people that you can see that might get you in a little bit quicker. Don't accept the, the like quick and easy, here's a painkiller, let's just, you know, get you, get you feeling better for right now. Mm-hmm. Seek out the care that you actually need and advocate for yourself. I'm, I'm challenging our, our listeners and people in general, and this is something that I believe in every day. But now that I've gone through this process myself, I believe in it even more. I'm very passionate about this. Please, if you need help, seek it out and, and, and push. Call. Don't be, don't be rude. Don't be rude <laughs> to people. Don't be rude to schedulers. Right. Don't be rude to insurance people. Don't be rude to your pharmacy. Don't be rude to your providers, but push. There's a way to push respectfully and, and do so and make yourself, you're not a victim. You're a patient. So you, did, you, yeah. you, you have the power. There you go. So you didn't have a torn tendon. It was just a, a slip disc the entire time. Uh, that that was it. I've had so many different diagnoses, and now that I finally had an MRI today, yeah, we got to look inside. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It was so much fun to say that I I I, I broke my butt. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, but you did it. I didn't break my butt. I mm. broke my back. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, look, we can't all have a perfect life, you know. Right. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. tough, man. Yeah, I mean, the medical industry today is, it's, yeah, it's it's rough. And, you know, there's a lot that can be said about it. Um, but I agree. I mean, having gone through a lot of stuff myself like that, uh, you've got to advocate yeah. for yourself. You have yeah. to do it. And I'm still learning about it, even though I'm, you know, I'm still like, God, I don't want to wait. I got to wait three weeks for a doctor appointment. Are you kidding me? Why, what is going, what is, like, literally what is happening here? But, right, right. you know, whatever. Well, and what especially now, because the, the, there's no staff. There's no, like, I mean, right at this moment, there is just, they have such a hard time staffing up their hospitals and their it's, doctor's offices. and It's so, very difficult, yeah. Mm-hmm, even more than ever, you have to advocate for yourself because yeah. they're all on a triage system. Sure, yeah, so. they're underfunded, too, and understaffed, and yeah, the whole most, thing sucks. But, like, what's the, what's the answer? I don't know. Yeah. Most Less health care... Yeah, obviously, yes. Yeah. Fire, fire more of me. Yeah. Um, most most healthcare systems have posted a loss in the last um, in the last year. Thankfully, my healthcare system has not. Uh, most insurance companies have posted record profits. Yeah, well, it's just like gas too. Gas I, companies I, have done I the same just thing. Just want to say. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It yeah. It's weird. Well, you know what, Eric? I'm glad you got that off your butt. I mean, off your chest. I really, uh, I, I really appreciate that you're no, not. No, it was uh, on my butt. Thank you. Sitting yeah. idly about. <laughs> Our friends at the 21st Amendment Brewery welcome the warmer weather with the release of their brand new hoppy pilsner, Coaster Pills. With a label that depicts a magical portal into an amusement park of flavors, Coaster Pills has a good time around every turn. Coaster Pills is wonderfully clear and bright with a beautiful straw color and tight white bubbles. It has a snappy flavor with crisp lines and wonderful citrus, tropical, hoppy flavors and aromas. Plus, at 5.4% ABV, it'll help you coast right through your day like only the 21st Amendment can. Coaster Pills, as well as our summertime favorite Hell or High Watermelon Wheat, are available wherever you find great craft beer. I love that's my favorite part about doing the show where it's like, oh, you know... And another thing, you know, insurance sucks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. Let's welcome the warmer weather with uh, a new product this summer from 21A. Before we get to uh, the history of the turkey leg, Bev, what's up, dude? You went to Disneyland. How was it? How was that? How was that ish? Imagine it was torture and terrifying and awful. It was busy. Was it? And, and, and weird. It was a weird mm. trip. There were some things that I had. There were some things that I had experienced on my, my previous trip, and I was like, oh, that's different. And then to experience them again this time mm. around to know that it wasn't a one off, I have a lot to say about it. Tell okay. Us. Like what? No, I can't what talk happened? about it. 
Why can't not? talk about it. Why I'm going to talk about it on the next show. Okay. You do, wow, you're going to do a oh. show on it. I'm doing a whole show on it. Oh. Okay. All right. Is this? It's uh... going to be a negative show, and I apologize. <laughs> uh oh. But I, I have a lot a of feelings. Show? You do have a lot of feelings. Okay. Well, that's good. But I well, think they're val- I think they're valid. I went to Disneyland five times this year. Wow. Wow. Question mark. I can't actually. I actually don't remember. Well. I will say that both Bob Chapek and Josh DeMauro are in the chat <laughs> actively right now. So well, I have a lot to say to bo- both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Two snaps wow. and an exit. Um, I hope that they're uh, recording their usual Twitch session that uh, we pirate and um, <laughs> redistribute as the dirty yellow strap. Great. Is that what that is? That's that's what the dirty yellow strap is. is it's on our we, feet. I have no idea what it is. I see it. I go around with those guys. Do whatever they want. I don't know, man. <laughs> we we pirate the Twitch stream from uh, Josh and uh, Bob, oh. and because uh, they they do this every once in a while, they do a Twitch stream. Okay. Uh, they've only done it twice, and we um, like Dan and I have listened in, and we're like, let's cut out the choice bits and uh, put that on our feed. Wow. Unscraping the vault and um, the other one. All right, the the, the other show that that I'm Bantha. that I'm actually on. Oh, okay. I have to say, Dirty Yellow Strap is just fantastic. It's pretty good. I know no. exactly what oh, that means. Nice. I don't. <laughs> yes, you don't get you don't get the reference. No, I don't get it. When you have to pull your strap, it's always like when you're sitting on a ride. It's you have to the, pull the strap. It's always pull the yellow dirty. tab. Pull oh, the yellow I, strap. Honestly, I thought of a pea soaked jock strap. Oh, and I'm like, ew. what is this show? That's what? disgusting. Yeah. Oh my god! Sorry, as a man, <laughs> I'm so physical and sports like that. I only Jeez. think in terms of sports and urine. <laughs> it's the only well, two things I think about. As a different man, right. all I think about <laughs> is uh, the Supreme Resort and how great it's been lately. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's not. Don't be sarcastic about it. I'm no. Not. I just. I have to take it's your been word. Fantastic. For it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Beverly, Eric. You had your moment in the sun. Now it's time for Beverly. Okay. okay. Can you chill out for a second? All right. I, I, I wanted to talk about this article I found about a time traveler <laughs> from the year 3000 who uh, it says that aliens are going to contact us this month. I hope so. I really do. <laughs> Uh, so you said the park was busy. Was it busier or is it uh, the park level? Because like you said, you've been about five times. Do you see things increasing or it's sort of plateauing i see things increasing and i i see there's <sighs> definitely a schedule um like if you those mid those midweek days are the only days that you can really go and not mm-hmm. just hate everybody i don't understand why it's why it's getting busier hmm. with with the i mean because you go online and you you know you see articles going the magic is gone <laughs> and you see people going i will never Blah, 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 because the price increases or whatever. But clearly people are still going, and it sounds like more people than ever are going. It was, I mean, it was, I think, Thursday. And we got we got there every day for rope drop, which was something I had never actually done. Um, And then pretty much by noon or right after noon, we were like, let's go. We left. Mm-hmm. We went back to the hotel. We took a nap. Mm-hmm. We came back at like 6 or 7. Yeah and then closed out the park because it was open until midnight but that whole like 12 to 6 window was straight trash wow hmm. i have heard that it's it's pretty pretty darn busy in the afternoon but those early morning you, you got to get there at rope drop. you have to it was it that was the most magical part of the trip i was like <laughs> oh this is great leaving hmm. being able to leave and come back was bad, the best part I i'm guess. gonna say one thing yeah <laughs> that was um ridiculous mm-hmm. i'm not gonna include this next week but so we got there for a rope drop and we're like okay we're gonna do rise let's go let's get in line let's just go okay. do it rise okay? of the resistance yes. rise, rise of the resistance yes, right? right like we're right there we're right at that part where you veer off into frontier land yeah yeah sure man sure whatever Somewhere over there, we're like, we our eyes are on the prize. Okay. We get there. We're in a good place in line. We're standing for about five minutes. Cast member comes by and is like, ride's broken. <laughs> don't stand in line. We don't know when it's coming back. 
And I was like, how is it broken? It's been open for six minutes. <laughs> it did not come back online until 1 p.m. <gasps> oh. Wow. And do you get like a like the all fast pass? Thing, oh, I didn't or do you get, get a jack. Thing to come, real nothing. <laughs> I think they're supposed to give you something. They didn't give us anything. God, I think it's probably for because it. it was only six. The park had only been open for six minutes, so they really didn't feel like they wasted a lot of my time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Well, wow. That's anyway. funny. But they it was <laughs> you from going on something else. Right. At that time. Yeah, they definitely should have given you something. Do you go and eat like the new food and like the seasonal foods and stuff there? I do not. No. Really? Surprising to me. Rude. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like you had a great time, Bev. I, I did. I, I it sounds negative. I did have a good time. Uh, I do yeah. have some good things to talk about. Um, okay. I just have some things that I noticed that I thought were kind of Bo icky. Like yeah. I, I just if that's the way things are going, I'm, I'm a little like. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing about all this stuff. Okay. Yeah. It'll, it'll make me feel better by not wanting to go. Fair. All right. We're going to take a quick break, everybody. We're going to come back and we're going to learn about how the turkey legs eventually wound up in a Disneyland, which I'm sure that's exactly what the origin story is. They just wandered over there one day. Yes. Right? That's it. Yeah. They still, they're still going. They're like lemmings. Anyway, ears up. We'll be right back. And now, back to the show that ignites your dream wish of imaginations and magical color wonderment of forever. Ears up. All right, I had to go get a coaster pills, everybody. Look at this tight white bubble. Wow, look at look at that head yeah, right there. Why not? All right, Eric, tell us about the... Well, actually, is this technically a what's... Eat Eric eating again segment or no? Yeah, let's just play the theme song because let's just play why, the theme why not? Song. Why not? All right, what's Eric eating again, Eric? Let I'm guess. eating turkey legs. Yeah, a boy. They're big. They're, I love them. Yeah, people like them. Some people love them. I love um, them. Some people are vegan and will never try one. Yeah, um, well, those people you know are what? boring. Oh, oh, no, we can't isolate <laughs> that part of the audience. Um, you know, my my one those... my one failure, the biggest failure besides besides cove ears, um, was the uh, you know when we made the um, the uh, churro the turkey castle shirt, and the I was turkey like, castle. you know what's going to sell even more? Yeah. the friggin' turkey legs castle shirt, and like nobody buys it. I, I love I, the thing. I think it looked. I think it came out great. Lulu did such an amazing job. I love the grease stain <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. classic, and like uh, no one cares. So whatever. Everybody yeah. loves the churro castle. Yeah. So stick with what uh, what worked. Yeah. I don't know. Churros are just somehow friendlier. <laughs> yeah, turkey legs are sort of aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got you with that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, that's just work, dude. I know I'm gonna sweat. Yeah. <laughs> as I do this. Yeah. Yeah. Turkey legs are big and they're they're big enough that you probably shouldn't tackle one on your own. I know plenty of people do. Yeah, nonsense. Nonsense. No. We're not raising a, a listenership of quitters. Yeah. Yeah. No. Everybody they they cost uh they cost what about 12 bucks each. Um, it, it, everybody buy one, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, you know what? They're, they're big enough that they're not really a snack. They are a full meal mm -hmm. and they're, yes. they're turkey legs and we love them so much that Disney guests buy 2 million turkey legs every year at Disney parks, wow. 2 million. Is that across the world? I can't imagine there's like that's across the in... United States. Okay, I don't know what wow. happens across the seas. I don't know what they're doing in Shanghai. Wow. Yeah, I don't have numbers in Shanghai. Two million. That's how many ear hats were sold in the that's Disneyland Resort thinking. in a year. Same, same and numbers. There we go. And people are eating those ear hats like nobody's business. They're also that's eating right. turkey legs like nobody's business. God bless uh, the, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These delightful treats ascended to Disney snack fandom um, it, pretty recently. Uh, it, you know, it, it's it's when snacks suddenly became 
their own thing like magnets and on <laughs> shirts and you, you would buy you would buy pins that had a, a picture of your favorite snack mm-hmm. but it, that that kind of implies that disney has always been selling these things but they haven't they're oh. a pretty new addition to our our parks hmm. um so let's take a moment to delve into the history of turkey life let's do it let's go some let's Let's do do some delving let's let's delve everybody um turkey legs are uh are not exclusive to like disney world versus disneyland both uh both places have them plenty of county fairs also have Mm -hmm. them county state renaissance fairs everybody loves having a giant hunk of meat uh that they can eat right off the bone Uh, But in 1989, Disney's food and beverage executive Dave Jarrett went on a nationwide search for new treats for the parks. Man, what a what a job. I'm sorry. Right. Like what a trumped up like, you know, I'm just going to go tour the country. Oh, really? Why? You find a new snack. You know, that's like Guy Fieri. Get You know, get out of the way. Here's here's the the exact way to you know fleece your company <laughs> right just to right travel around yeah guy God. here's here's some new ray-bans go over there and make a few million dollars yeah <laughs> um, but uh but dave happened across this treat at uh at some fair somewhere and said you know what i can make this work <laughs> uh so he rolled out turkey legs slowly We started out with one location for turkey legs in 1989, uh, which I suppose now that I say 1989 out loud and say, this is a recent thing. uh, 1989 was a long time ago. (laughs) And there are people that some of our listeners were born after that. Probably. Maybe. I don't know our demographics. Anyway. Neither do I. Yeah. In 1989, uh, the, the first location to sell turkey legs in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World was Big Al's. It was a food cart in Frontierland outside the Country Bear Jamboree. So instantly l- lines formed. Uh, park guests just couldn't get enough of it. It goes without saying that, that uh, the popularity of this treat was enough that they had to expand it outside of one outdoor vending cart uh for some reason uh this same cart still exists well for some reason the cart still exists and for some reason it now sells toys and hats so if you want a coonskin cap and if you want to feel like a kid in the 50s who watched davy crockett um that's where you go big nice. l's right. yeah yeah uh these days guests can find turkey legs all over walt disney world and Disneyland. Epcot has uh, the Fife and Drum Tavern outside the American Adventure. They sell turkey legs, funnel cakes, and uh, craft beer. What a combination. Uh, that's a perfect combination, to be quite honest. Right? Sounds oh, yeah. like America. Yes. Right. <laughs> that's America right there. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> you go Disney's, with what you know. Yeah. Disney's Animal Kingdom. Go to uh, the uh, lounge outside of the Yak and Yeti where you can get also frozen alcoholic beverages, egg rolls, and turkey legs. And if you're in the mood for a turkey leg in Disney Springs, check out the House of Blues Smokehouse. Um, There used to be a location in Hollywood Studios uh, called Toluca Legs. (laughs) Toluca Legs Turkey Company. But that's like a vaudeville act. (laughs) <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure if that has reopened, but uh, that used to be mm-hmm. there. <laughs> right? It does sound pretty great. Um, uh, in Disneyland, we have uh, we have several locations where you can uh, where you can pick things up. Um, why is did this update? Oh no! Oh no! bad content right here Mm. where are all the notes from disneyland um i'll just do it off the dome um there are four locations in disneyland where you can get 
in in the Disneyland Resort where you can get turkey legs. You can get them at the Poultry Palace in uh, DCA. You can get them at uh, the food cart that is on the west side of the hub in Disneyland proper. There is the uh, there's a food cart along the Rivers of America that sells turkey legs. And there is a fourth location that um, I'm not placing. Oh, Edelweiss snacks, of course. Of Obviously, course. you can get a turkey leg at Edelweiss snacks where you can also get a chimichanga right outside the Matterhorn itself. Oh. Um, I'm glad I took I'm notes sorry. on this earlier. You can get a chimichanga? Oh, yeah. You can get chimichangas at Edelweiss this? snacks. You really things. know this? I heard that they're disgusting. Oh, really? Because I would they're eat... just like grease-laden <laughs> flour. Perfect. Yeah, sounds yeah. like kind of your alley. Yeah, you're Sign right. Sign me up. You're right. <laughs> Shit. It, Whoa, it... <laughs> Beverly. This is a family. Sorry, I forgot what show we were on, but also no. I said what I said. <laughs> no, there are, there are certain hosts on this network that absolutely love the chimichangas, and when I watched them eat the chimichangas, I went... That is something I won't put into <laughs> put into my body. <laughs> oh man! Um, and that was Supreme Con one, not the second Supreme Con. Mm. Um, anyway, listen to the Supreme Resort, everybody. It's on the Years Up Network. It's pretty great. Uh, my uh, co-hosts might not live as long as me, um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty great. <laughs> right. It's just me arguing with myself in yeah. the future. So the secret to, uh, to turkey legs, Disney chefs cure the turkey legs in a brine solution first to mm. impart that rich and salty flavor. Okay. Uh, they're, they're then smoked over hickory, much like a ham. Uh, so this, different, this is a little bit of a different take on turkey prep than most people do. Uh, so it gives it, a, uh, it, it gives it an exotic flair that's different from your normal your normal thanksgiving turkey um some people because of this preparation technique don't believe that turkey legs are actual turkey legs as you mentioned earlier jason um yeah that's rumors... always been like the internet thing where like you know they're ostrich legs or something like that because they're it, i mean yeah. if you've never seen one and maybe people haven't mm -hmm. They're massive. Yeah. They are oh, yeah. humongous. They're not just like, oh, like, you know, because we're coming up on Thanksgiving. It's not like you're sitting down at dinner and you're like, oh, let me get a turkey. Like people are paying $14 for it. No, it's a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it is enormous and it does taste different than your normal Thanksgiving uh, mm -hmm. turkey. Tastes and like ham. It does yeah, taste it, like it tastes ham. Like ham. Like saltier ham. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's, it's, it's cured in, it's brined and it's uh, smoked. So it, it's, very, it's very much prepared like a ham. Mm, okay. uh, so rumors have uh, surrounded this for so long that, uh, let's see, um, Travel Channel star Andrew Zimmern oh, addressed okay. the rumors in an episode about Disney parks, saying really? that, oh. like, mm. it, it, in a specific episode, he said, no, these are real <laughs> turkey legs here's them preparing turkeys they they watched yeah. them like slaughtering turkey they did not um <laughs> damn. Like, Jesus, I was like, see this. yeah wow. I'm, I'm instantly thinking seeker show material <laughs> yeah. here we go uh, mm, okay or at least walk um, about yeah <laughs> and uh let's see um it, some people say emu some people say ostrich um <laughs> emu come on Right, right. Yeah, I've heard that. That's someone trying to flex online like they know what an emu is. Oh, oh yeah. Snopes, um, Snopes.com stepped in to help debunk claims as well. They still, they still, these rumors keep circulating. It keeps coming back up. Um, I don't know. Ha have any of you eaten um, ostrich before? No, I can't say I have. At least I have, uh, uh, not knowingly. Okay. Okay. I think I have. I know I've had ostrich jerky. Okay. But I think I've had it prepared other ways also. Or well, I I think I've had it before. Hmm. Okay. It's it, I mean it's really red meat, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think I had an ostrich burger actually. I, I've never had an ostrich thin. 
burger, but I've had an ostrich steak and it was like the super, it was like the toughest. It was definitely red meat and it was, it was, it was gamey. It was super gamey. It was good, but, but it's totally different than the, than what people think these, these turkey legs are. This all just reminds me of that Matthew Broderick movie where he's like running uh, exotic animals for like this rich people to eat or whatever. And then he has a conscience because he didn't know about it and freedom or something like that. Remember that? No. I no. no, I have no idea what movie I think it was. It was about. Matthew Broderick. And I want to say it was um, the guy, the Godfather homie. What's his name? The dude, the guy, the guy. Brando? The Godfather. Yeah, I think it was a Brando. I'm going to look it up. You keep going. Okay. Not that I'm not paying attention. Be, sure. I'm a, I'm a oh up. yeah. No. And, it, pay half attention and yes. look up this Marlon Brando movie. I have had ostrich. I had okay. it at. I have to say it right. Fuddruckers. Oh wow. Oh, Fuddruckers. I had to make sure I said it right. Wow. Not yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, they had ostrich burgers. <laughs> wow. And like elk burgers. They had like a bunch wow. of weird burgers. I had. To, I was like, I think I had a burger. Yeah. The freshman. Oh, I've heard of that. I have not seen it. Not the graduate, Dan. Not the graduate. Yep. Uh, uh, satirical crime comedy, uh, Marlon Brando and Matthew Broderick. Man, I'm so good with Penelope Ann Miller and Frank Hoyley. I have not seen this movie, and I don't oh, know what. Oh, it's great. It, it, the, the name sounds familiar, but I have not seen this movie. Yeah. What I have seen is a turkey leg. <laughs> is a human being eat his own leg and thinking it was a turkey leg? Dan Dan texted me um, 24 minutes ago to say check out the chat. I'm sorry, Dan. Um, yeah, uh, someone's working here, Daniel. Yeah, I'm Come busy. On. Okay, yeah, bro. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so what makes the turkey legs so big? Uh, many of the turkeys that we prepare for holiday dinner are female turkeys who um, are already plenty big. Mm -hmm. we, we, we grow Rude. them big. They're, they're Rude. Not... <laughs> I'm just saying we, we grow we specifically. We prefer the term thick. Um, are you a turkey? I'm not saying you're a turkey. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying female birds are prepared for Thanksgiving. Uh, um, look at these birds. Yeah. Yeah, see? Check out the gams on them birds. Yeah, the birds, everybody. <laughs> yeah, see? Anyway, Disney uses male turkeys. Um, and uh, male turkeys are uh, svelte and have very large legs. Sick. Um, Same, honestly. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so they're, they're toms. They're, they're toms. They're all John Debneys. Okay. Um, right. So each each turkey leg that Disney sells is about one and a half pounds. <laughs> wow. Bone in. And honestly, that makes the price feel a lot better. It, yeah, I mean, but it's mostly bone. Yeah. Well, not yeah, mostly. Yeah. You know what? Only about a quarter pound of that is bone. The rest is meat. Yeah, that's, that's they're not meat. mostly bone. Yeah. So it's like three or four out the four ounces of bone. It, yeah, yeah, it's it, I mean, the Jeez. bone is big. The bone is large, but nice. it's still it's still a bird bone. It's not it's not the, the most dense thing out there. What you sure. are paying for is yeah, it's, it's protein. Right. You're paying for meat. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> um, so turkey legs clock in uh between 750 depending on the, your your source between Correct. 750 and 1000 calories <laughs> that seems about right yeah. yeah yeah but it's like putting it in those terms where you just absolutely housing a turkey leg by yourself you just your body especially as you get older you yeah. can't you can't like you can't like flash mob your body with a thousand calories in 10 minutes anymore and get away with it but at well, Disneyland, i think you sort of can because you're you walk you so walk 10 much. miles a day well, yeah. i'm not even talking about like burning it off but just like it's it's like putting a fire hose in your car and gassing <laughs> up your car that way <laughs> like... oh yeah things are gonna happen to you true. Yeah, that's true true Wild. disney it, well so 36 to 50 grams of fat uh more that's than a thousand grams of sodium that tracks. Oh, God. How many <laughs> grams of sodium are you supposed to have in general a day? 
Uh, oh man, I should have looked that up. I don't remember, it's, but I know Top Ramen has it like a thousand. Yeah, it's, and it's it, so good. yeah, it's it's not ridiculous compared to other processed foods that we all enjoy. Uh, but uh, limit sodium intake to less than twenty three hundred milligrams a day. So that's, sorry, milligrams. I mean a thousand milligrams, not okay, grams. So, so it's half your so, daily amount. Okay. Perfect. You're fine. Don't eat yeah. anything else at the park. <laughs> well, it's also no. half your daily calorie intake, so it's actually well, not surprising. True. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Like, what other food do you know that's like equal calorie and sodium? There you go. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What else? So Disney, in fact, does counter this argument. It does counter this fact with the 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 opposing fact that the average guest. Uh, walks around a Disney park enough to burn about that, about as many calories um, as a turkey leg uh, gives you every day. So right. just walking around a Disney park, the average Disney guest burns off 750 yeah. to 1,000 um, calories every day. So it's a no-brainer. It's yeah. a wash. Yeah. That way yeah. you're turkey leg neutral. Let's just right. not talk about how many calories churros have. Right, or anything else. <laughs> anything yeah. else. Right. Don't eat anything else. You're <laughs> yeah. fine. Uh, so here's some, some, interesting, uh, some interesting turkey talk here. Uh, Disney has had a unique connection to turkeys outside of their legs, but uh, kind of close to Thanksgiving dinner. Huh. Um. Let's see. Uh, in 1989, the first year that turkey legs were offered in Frontierland in uh, Walt Disney World, it also marked the first year that George Herbert Walker Bush pardoned a turkey from the White House Thanksgiving dinner. Whoa. What a lucky turkey. This became an annual tradition that extended, um, that, that continues to this day. Uh, George W. Bush con continued that tradition um, and uh, added a specific Disney spin because in 2005, he pardoned two turkeys named Marshmallow and Yam. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> and instead of sending them to a farm, mm -hmm. like right. previous turkeys, farm. yeah, for sure, he sent them to the petting zoo at Disneyland. We've met those turkeys. You, mm -hmm. you have yeah. pet those turkeys. Yeah. You uh, all three of you, I'm sure. Yeah, I tugged on their wall. Not I. Yeah, yeah. I definitely have a picture of it somewhere in an old phone. Nice. Um, he <laughs> W like did a, like a spy. <laughs> You've got a <laughs> freaking Taron in the Patriot. I have it somewhere in my old phone. <laughs> your, your original iPhone. You're like, no, I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Honey, uh, that's literally a brick from our garden. No, it's a, a phone. <laughs> Sorry. W did so again in 2006 with Flyer and Fryer. <laughs> oh. In 2007, wow. um, W changed up the tradition and instead of sending May and Flower, get it? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do. Uh, I really do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we? He just punted them like footballs. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Instead of sending May and Flower to uh, Walt Disney World, uh, no, instead of sending them to Disneyland, he sent them to Walt Disney World, where they served as the honorary grand marshals of the Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm sure like he got to choose where they go. I'm sure I oh, yeah. just see him be like, <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Basically, it's Sam. If Sam was the president, <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I want to send these turkeys to Disney World instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh my goodness! Uh, yes, um, uh, future. It, the The tradition continues of pardoning turkeys every year at Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but uh, turkeys have sadly not been sent to a Disney park since two thousand nine. No, mm -hmm. all the yeah. drug convictions. But I think that's oh two thousand. That can't be true because I met Jason in 2010 and we've seen them at the park. Well, well they were probably still there. They were they were oh, just other no. turkeys. More. Oh. It, that was still marshmallow and yam. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, All right, fair enough. You know the year we met, like off the top of your head, yeah. you know, off rip. You know it. Yeah. I could. Wow. Tell you. I also know the date. 
Well, yeah, because it was Valentine's Day. It was yeah, like, it like a brain genius to figure that out. It was 2010, yeah. And it's easy wow. because it's 2010, so I always know how long we've known each other. That sucks. For you. Nice. I don't know. Anyway, Eric. <laughs> Enough of that. Please, yeah. let's get back to turkeys. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're in the mood for some turkey, uh, you can have uh, more than just turkey legs around the parks. Um, if you, if you enjoy your turkey sliced instead of like ripping it off the bone, like a damn animal, yeah, uh, my yeah. favorite wrestler. Yeah. Go to, uh, the Liberty tree tavern in the magic kingdom, because you can get the Patriots platter, which is an all you <laughs> care to eat Patriots platter. I hate that name. That is the worst. Oh God. If it, it's Freedom in liberty Fries. square yeah well yeah, right 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 oh it's, it's too an... cl- it's too close to home it's too close to the current <laughs> timeline of like being like hyper relevant in certain circles do they circles. still call it like you it. know what let, I don't me, like let it. me double check let's see patriots um platter at liberty tree tavern wow that came up right away I yeah like it's still it. called the patriots platter okay okay Anyway, what can um, you get there yeah. again? What is it? It's you get a whole you you get a whole lot of meat. Uh, it's an all you care to eat experience, which is something that dis that's unique to Disney, and I dislike that phrase, but it's better than all you can eat. All you I care suppose. to eat. Yeah, it is Disney. It is Disney fied, but in an <laughs> odd way. I I know right. what you mean. I don't necessarily really enjoy it. All you yeah. care to eat. Well. It's almost I, like, not gaslighting, but it's almost like uh, like um, a neg, where it's like, oh, you care to eat that much, do you? Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's it's a little shamey, like. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, you, really, you you care to continue? <laughs> You're, we're you still care? doing this? You, you care, care to care order to another eat. plate? The, the, woman, <laughs> the woman in her bonnet is standing there with her little notepad and her quill judging the crap out of you <laughs> right i love it yeah uh this but yeah evil times therefore we have no silverware would you like another refill of your pepsi <laughs> you had no forks but you had pepsi dude i got a lot of tables <laughs> wow wow cable guy cable right? gog yeah. oh, Google. Uh, best movie jim carrey's best movie hands down absolutely cable guy and the been once bitten, but that's you know either here or there. Anyway, go uh, ahead, continue with the Patriots yeah, platter. Please. please let me continue talking about the Patriots platter for goodness' sake. Yeah, Mister Five yeah. Minute Segment over here. The all you care to eat experience. <laughs> that, this is on you. Yeah, I know. Um, you made me extend this into an entire show. Yeah. Uh, so it it recreates the traditional holiday Thanksgiving meal. Um, all year around. So in the middle of summer, you can get a heaping pile of roast turkey breast, pot roast, and pork roast. That's the meat side of the menu. Uh, mashed potatoes, uh, roasted vegetables, herb stuffing, macaroni and cheese. There's some salad in case you want <laughs> a not cooked vegetable. Um, and Apple cake or toffee cake are very much uh, preferred favorites at the end of the meal. Um, These days, Liberty Tree Tavern is one of the few locations in the Magic Kingdom that also allows adult beverages like American wines and craft beer. Uh, No cocktails. Mm. Don't ask for cocktails. This is the Magic Kingdom we're talking about. Um. But uh, you can also get soda and coffee. Oh, and no. if, if you're from Georgia, you can get a Coke uh, in any flavor. And if you're from uh, the Midwest, you can get a uh, pop. Right. And if you're from yeah. whatever portion of the country it is that calls it soda pop, you can get a soda pop. Soda uh, pop. Yeah. I love it. But yes, um, Disney chefs will always accommodate your family's needs. If you have allergy issues, they will take care of that. And uh, there you go. You can have a full Thanksgiving meal without having to rip meat off of a bone. But let's get back to that bone. Let's get back to that turkey leg. If you want to recreate the salty, smoky flavor of of this park, uh, park 
flavor it. I was that was almost a slip of the tongue, Whoa. but it was perfect, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, just, Nurse Jackie, why don't you? Uh, you know, sorry. Yeah. Uh, look, just search online. Bing it. Alta Vista it. There you go. Google it. Um, don't Google it. Uh, Alta Vista it. Uh, there are many, many versions of this recipe online. Um, we don't, most people don't have access to giant male turkeys, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you can try to recreate this experience at home if you would enjoy uh, doing so on your own. Otherwise, just wait until your next visit to the parks and shell out $12 for a pound and a half of meat and bone. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. You know, when I do turkeys, I don't, I don't brine them. I do like a dry rub, like a dry yeah. rub. Yeah. Uh, my buddy's big on brining and he has like a whole like brine recipe, a homebrew chef. You can look it up. Um, oh, that I guy. Just, yeah. But I just don't <laughs> find it like, I don't know. I, I tried it once and I was like, I don't really, you know, whatever. I don't really notice a big difference. You spatchcock it, dry brine it. It's just the same. And it's qu- it cooks faster too. True. True. Very good. Well, there Eric. we go. Cool. I love it. I love Thank a turkey you. leg story. All right. Let's do a little bit of news. Huh? There's a couple of news announcements that we got to get through. We have to. Okay. Like literally. Uh, absolutely. We really do because, and well, and you'll find out in a second. The listeners are clamoring the for this past, news. Present and future with all the news that's fit to cover. It's the Ears Up Disney News. Uh, I love it all Disney news. I do have a couple of images to share too, at least one. Um, Eric, maybe you know this. Uh, so Hope is in the chat and she wants to us to cover some uh, Main Street Electrical Parade news. Oh, but I can't find any new announcements. Do you know about this? <laughs> I le- I was gonna say if I need to catch up on something, let me look that up. Yeah, look because <laughs> I don't up. know. I'm gonna continue. I want you guys. I want you to look it up, and I'm gonna continue with uh, with. Uh, well, let's just jump right into to sharing this this video moment. Oh, okay. um, there's a new. <laughs> you're gonna. I wish Jeremy was here. There's a new. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna, gonna mutter movie. underneath you. The yeah, whole please, time. please don't. Uh, there's a new movie coming to Disney Plus. It's a documentary. It's called Adina Menzel, Which Way to the Stage? Mm. Which, first of all, if you have to ask that, I mean, <laughs> see, you know, the, no. You know, that's like, where, 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 which way to my front door? I don't know. Like, you should know. There's one. You go with the thing. It's right there. You should know it. Are you Jerry Seinfeld? Hey, what are you, what are you thinking about the, the Johns, you guys? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you want to watch the trailer for it? I mean, I guess. <laughs> what, I is, mean, what is this? No. Our hit show walkabout? You're supposed to say yeah. yes. You're supposed to say yes. Everybody. Oh, fine. Here, let's see. The very first day of rehearsal, we're gonna do 17 shows and then they end up in my dream spot, which is at the garden. This tour is bigger. It's to tell the story of my life and how I got here. Like, literally, who cares? Yeah, my entire identity was wrapped up in being a singer. But I needed a job, so I went in for this little off-Broadway show. This is from a show called Rent. When I got cast in Rent, I got an agent. A record deal. Agent. So you think it's happening. But I sold no records, and then I got dropped. I just kind of start all over again. Success of Frozen, that was a defining moment for me. It's about harnessing this power we all have in ourselves. Is it? How we all you? have this power over snow and ice we in put ourselves? We so many labels. That's I do. Working, Mom. Love you, Walker. Are you a Broadway girl? Or are you a pop girl? Who are you? What do you want to be? I'm all these things, and all these things make up who I am. No. I 
I'm sorry. I just, I, I can't, I no. couldn't care less about this. I couldn't care less about it. I the, really couldn't. The success of Frozen, you could tell this is a, never mind. But the success of Frozen is what was really defining to her, not the iconic role in Wicked that she played on Broadway. Oh, I didn't even know. I mean, she, yeah, she mentions Rent. And it's like, oh, I didn't know she was in like. She was Alphaba in Wicked with oh, yeah. uh, Kristen Chenoweth, like the original cast. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Wicked was was huge. I never really liked Rent. Um, I, I, don't know. I don't know anything about. I mean, I, know, I didn't like. I Rent. know a little bit about it, but uh, you know, I, it, I don't it, want to talk it's about because like, <laughs> as as a show choir like guy in high school, yeah. it, but like that some of the, the Rent songs were like crammed down our throat, like you're gonna do this one because it's popular. Like, how do you measure a year, Eric? Five hundred twenty-nine thousand <laughs> six hundred minutes. I I dislike oh, that I song. I hate that song so much. <laughs> well, anyway, there you go. Adina Menzel is getting her very own documentary. It's going to air on Disney Plus Friday, December 9th. And I really do want to do a watch party with Jeremy, but he has yet to respond to my tweet. You want to do a I'd, watch party I'd, for that? I'd show? watch that. Well, yeah, because Jeremy <laughs> can't stand Adina Adele. Oh. Name. I'd watch the two of you watching yeah, that. I'd watch you too. Yeah. <laughs> I would watch that. Because, like, I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't care. It's like, oh, the story is to persevere and never give up on your dreams. Meanwhile, people have literally gone bankrupt from not giving up on the dreams. Sometimes you have to give up on your dreams, folks. Sometimes you have to let things, you know, let it go. You have to. You can't keep chasing a dream if you're putting your own money up because you're going to go broke. Yeah, I mean, okay. So to be fair, you don't like a lot of things. So like, I don't like that you said that. I'll, okay. <laughs> okay. Um. So it doesn't say a whole lot that you watched that and were like, oh, this doesn't appeal to me. But she seems kind of like a terrible person. Like she not, does. Not, you got you got that she's a terrible person. Terrible and have a minute person. forty-five she's, trailer. She seems fine. Yeah. She seems like a. Fine she's a person. mom. I don't know if you she, knew that. She seems it seems very full of yourself to tell your your story about how you became famous when <laughs> it, di it did not sound in that trailer like anything really went that wrong except one time she got dropped from a label because she didn't sell enough records mm -hmm. it might be a little self-indulgent yeah she had to start like, from the beginning oh god how sad for you she had to start all over meanwhile right. no her starting all over was her going back and going to an off-broadway thing but no she had enough connections where she could do it kind of whatever she wanted like, i don't care I don't care. That's what I mean. I don't care. It's she's she's shining her own diamond. Like it's not no, it's not, it's not a good story to tell. There are a lot of other people I would prefer to see their story. Yeah. To stardom. Speaking of uh, stories that I want to hear about to stardom, Bob Chapek gave an interview recently uh, talking about a whole bunch of stuff. Apparently, Disney stock is down, and people are down on on Bobby C about it. But it's, it's way the hell down. Yeah, it's like eighty eight bucks or something like that. It's very very cheap right now. Mm. It bounced a little bit. We're back. We're back up okay. to ninety. I'm just checking oh. right now. Ninety forty six. There is you go. Where it ended today. There you go. So I I I'm I'm worth slightly more money right now. Out of boy. Um, so basically, this is just a, a little excerpt that I thought was pretty interesting. He's talking about like what other things that they can do with the Disney brand other than just parks and, and movies, right? Um, he says, I equate uh, managing the company's portfolio to a manual car going between the gas pedal, brake, and clutch. The focus, he said, must be, quote, customer lifetime value. More than its media peers, Disney is able to look well outside of film, TV, and digital media to enhance that customer value. On the drawing board, for example, is a newly planned community outside Palm Springs. Uh, yeah, you know, we've heard about that. Chapek defended new pricing and reservation systems as theme parks developed you, you during know what? COVID while back, they were shut. Yes, back, sir. Back up. Back up. Yeah, I can't. There's a wall right there. Call call, call it for what it is. <clears throat> story <clears throat> worth. Story worth? You've got, you've got to talk about the story of oh. community in Palm well, Springs. Well, look, I didn't write story. This, all right? You go okay. talk to Deadline about the story. Work. Okay. I don't know. What no, you're about. you've got to talk about the story every time. That's the entire point. Is oh. the story. I don't understand. 
But I love you anyway. They've oh, helped good. manage attendance and improve the guest experience, but also generate some controversy. The old systems were antiquated and uh, treated everyone as one size fits all. This is pre-COVID stuff, right? It's like the same throttle. Uh, we would wear it as a badge of honor, he said. The one thing that was clear is that people do not want to be treated the same. <laughs> What is he talking about? It's about like it's about these micro experiences where people want to pay to skip the lines. They want to pay to do the thing. And it's like he's you know, an on insane hand, person. On the one hand, he's correct because you were just telling us in the first segment it, the park is b busier now than it was at any other time that you've seen it this year. Hmm. Yeah. He, he's not wrong. That's what people don't understand it's about working. JPEG. He doesn't just open his mouth and guess about stuff. He has numbers to back his, his information up. Yeah. He said virtual theme parks are unlikely, which I thought that was an interesting thing, a virtual theme park visit, even with the burgeoning metaverse. Because we talked about it a little bit, but when the metaverse sort of popped, um, you could potentially maybe just go to the park on your VR headset or whatever, and you get your fix that way. Uh, but he said some behind the scenes looks are possible. Quote, people like to get off attractions and see exactly how those ghosts in the haunted mansion work, which by the way, they're on a, a friggin' hydraulic thing and they pop up. It's fine. Hmm. Uh, people, um, I want to check that out. It's usually the reason why rides stop. It's very funny to me. People on the haunted mansion, the, they stop the ride because they're trying to look out and, and get off the ride to see how it works. We can give you that ability to exit the theme park virtually and figure out what makes it tick. I thought that was, and that's hmm. basically, uh, that's basically it. And then he says, uh, then when you're watching Disney plus the Haunted Mansion movie will be served up as your first choice, not buried on page four. So when we're talking a little bit about, uh, JPEG trying to get the, um, the theme parks tied into your Disney plus experience, maybe that's kind of what, you know, he's talking about. Like if you've, if you've queued up to see like how the Haunted Mansion works, Next time you load up Disney Plus, it's going to take that. It's sort of like the algorithm for YouTube right now. Hmm. It'll just serve you up the video of what's related to whatever you just searched. You're going to have to watch that movie with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Which I kind of liked. I'm not going to lie, man. It, it, holding out for Jared Leto. Oh, geez. No. That, that's, he's, he's the Hatbox ghost in the new one, if you haven't. No, he's not. Yeah, really? If you haven't clocked that. Yeah, he's uh, he's the the hatbox ghost in the new movie that's coming out next year. <laughs> Eric, have you found anything on the Main Street Electrical Parade? I am looking like Hope says all it's get on out. the Disney Wikipedia page, but I don't that, I haven't seen anything that's what about Hope it. Hope says, yeah. All right, you keep going. Maybe Hope can help us out and give us a link. <laughs> uh yeah, that'd be nice. I hope so. Uh... Let's see. I got um oh See, here's another, here's another share. There's a new dessert at Disney World. Okay. And I want to talk about it because I, I want to see if you guys would actually um, eat this dessert. Probably. Oh. <laughs> pro pro probably. Yeah. I, I, I found. Why does it oh, look like poop? Yeah. yeah, those ones look like poop. Yeah, these are weird. These That's are... not new. <clears throat> it's not new. Oh my gosh, it is animal poop. Yeah, no, animal. they've done this oh before. God. Oh, okay. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's just back again. Oh no, I, this is 2015. Yeah, yeah. Wow. This, so whoever <laughs> shared it in the Discord. Here, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna call I, him. That out. is funny though. Was it Stephen? <laughs> old news. Stephen. Yeah, apparently, it's old news. Well, apparently, I guess it comes and goes. But anyway, um, <clears throat> Disney World is dropping disgusting new dish on the, the menu of an Animal Kingdom shop. Animal poop. That is kind of gross, though. Anyway, I think yeah, it's kind of funny, but I do kind of like it. Well, I would right, eat it. And so, like, I don't know that I would, because, you know, and it looks like it's not like a like a poop emoji, like a turd, everybody. Sure. But it's like, you know, small it looks little like balls. The different whatever. types of poops of different animals. Yeah. Yeah. Scat. Yeah. That's scat. Yeah. yeah which is uh, from the Greek root skata, which mm. means poop. Oh, mm. I don't oh know thanks. If you guys knew that. Scatology. It's a study of poop. <laughs> it's a Greek root word. So you know that. Wow. Where's Lee from Greece and Disney? Come on. <laughs> how can people everywhere on my Instagram? Yeah, how can so... people breathe when there's no Greeks pavilion <laughs> in friggin' Epcot? How can people True. grow hair when there's no pavilion for Greece? So true. 
I, the only thing I'm seeing on the wiki about uh, Main Street Electrical Parade is that on July 14th, 2022, Disney announced the parade's 50th anniversary run would end on September 1st. Yeah, but I, I don't That's know. That's all I found too. So hope if yeah. you got a if you got a a linky, drop it in the yes, in the please. Chat arena, or man, if you cool. know what the announcement is, maybe just you could tell know. us too. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, let's well, talk more about uh, news from 2015. <laughs> the last thing I have yeah. to talk about real fast Sorry. is is a, a late breaking piece of news. And I want to mention the fact that, first of all, I want to go back to what people are were saying about this. So this is about the uh, Tarzan's Treehouse. Okay. Okay, in the Adventureland or whatever. When it came down, when the news came down that it was going to be rethemed or, or they were just working on it, Disney didn't even announce anything. They're just like, oh, they just quietly put up scrims and you know, whatever. They're doing work on it, right? People were flipping their wigs about it. <clears throat> What's it going to be? Whatever. Us Our, included. Well, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our friends over at WDWNT started the rumor mill churning, which is what they do. And, you know, people always go, well, you know, they're more right than they are wrong. And I really like calling them out because it's very fun. Because if you really dig into it, they're not. They're not more right than they are wrong. They're vague enough. To they do. make up stuff mm -hmm. just for clicks. And it's and it's. And I think it's an open secret, but people still give them clicks. And I don't understand why. Uh, this is from June 7th, 2022. What is happening over yeah, there? Someone's, someone's tightening noise. a zip tie. What's going on? All right. Um, in, this is June 7th, 2022. Entrance tree to Tarzan's treehouse fully removed for rumored Encanto retheme at Disneyland. No. No, there was no rumor. <laughs> the rumor, and, and, and that's all they say. They, they, they say that, and then in the article down below, which is, of course, you go through four different ads to get five, no, five different ads, six, six different, seven different ads. Uh, Disney has not announced a new theme for the jury house. Rumor has it the attraction may get an Encanto theme inspired by, Ant by Antonio's treehouse bedroom. Which, first of all, sounds stupid because Antonio was in the movie for like four minutes. So why would they do that? It makes no sense. It also they, doesn't really fit the theming of the area. No, not at all. Yeah, I mean, treehouse, True. jungle, you can make it work. I don't know. I guess. But like, so anyway, so, so. That was WWNT. Then the Kingdom Insider, um, you know, wrote an article in April. Uh, and WW wrote one earlier than that, too. I just didn't pull it up yet. Yeah, here it is right here. Uh, April 18th, 2022. Breaking. Tarzan's treehouse being rethemed, possibly to Encanto. And, of course, there's no, it just says, this is the, this is the sentence. Rumors indicate it may be Encanto. That's all they say about it. So they wrote an article in April, then they wrote another one in June. But after the one in April, uh, the Kingdom Insider wrote one the same day. Is an Encanto retheme coming to Tarzan's treehouse? Oh, boy. <laughs> Is it just because that's the only movie that had a house in it? I don't know. <laughs> or a tree. Yeah. Or a tree. Yeah. Luca didn't have any trees. It didn't. Even uh, famously. <laughs> comicbook.com, which is more of a blog site or more of a news site than a blog site, but still, you know, they cover mainstream stuff. But on that same day as well, on April 18th, they wrote about popular Disneyland attraction might be getting Encanto makeover. And that's it. They don't really, uh, you know, mention it. They don't mention WWNT, thank God. Uh, they don't <laughs> need more press. But like, so April, that clearly got a ton of hits. So they decided to rewrite the article in June publish another version of it in June, which is still the same vague nonsense. Well, we talked about it. I think we covered it on the show. Or maybe it was um, in depth, but I said, no way. They're literally <laughs> never going to do this. And then I think in that, well, maybe in one of those uh, new things, I was like, you know, I, there, we announced that they're redoing uh, Swiss Family Robinson. And I think, and I don't know if this is like the Barbara Streisand effect or not, but I seem to remember saying something about if they're going to do anything, that'd be cool if they just redid it as Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Because it makes sense. They're redoing right. the movie, right? Yeah. Well, today, the former Tarzan's Treehouse in Disneyland will be transformed into Adventureland Treehouse, reopening next year to the 1960 film Swiss Family Robinson. The walkthrough attraction's first run as a Swiss Family Treehouse lasted from 1962 to 1998. 
Disneyland's treehouse became Tarzan's treehouse in 99. And this is pretty funny. The, uh, that attraction shuttered in September 21, and rumors circulated from the likes of WDW News Today that it may be rethemed to the 2021 Disney animated hit Encanto. WDWNT ended up being wrong. As Disney announced Thursday on its official parks blog that the Adventureland Treehouse will be inspired by Walt Disney's Swiss Family Robinson in 2023. Quote, the Adventureland Treehouse will showcase wondrous new environments created amongst the branches of a giant tree on the shores of the Jungle River, where guests will once again enter by the giant water wheel and follow the wood rope stairways up, up, up into the bows, wrote Disneyland Public Relations Director Three Kelsey ups. Lynch. I know. <laughs> Here, you will find fascinating rooms that the family in this new story created for one another. From the mother's music den and the young son's nature room. But uh, well, this is what you want in a jungle house. You want a nature room. What does that mean? <laughs> you just didn't get a room? Did you sleep outside? Uh, to the teenage daughter's astronomer's loft. All things are fashioned from found objects and blah, 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 blah. Uh, apparently, it's going to open. Uh, uh, they don't really know, actually. But yeah, anyway, so there you go. So once again. Add that, tack this on to the myriad of things that WDW and T have been wrong about. They're just incorrect. And they don't care. No. Because it's been so long that nobody really remembers. I remember. I sort of love that they're making it, they're sort of reverting it back to what it was. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The name's a little bit generic, but I, it, and, but also very current Disney, the Adventureland Treehouse inspired by the swiss family robinson like isn't isn't that what it what the official name is on the, the sign <laughs> yeah, in one like of the like okay yeah but, you know so it's like a reimagined like it. but it's based so they're doing a disney plus series on the swiss family robinson right so i think it's that that sort they, of reality yeah they actually went through with it and did what people wanted, which is let's get Tarzan out of there and, and remake the thing that people still walk through at Walt Disney World mm-hmm. right? every day. Yeah. But I knew right off the bat, they're not going to do it. Inco- it's not, it's not going to happen. I wouldn't, I didn't put it past them Excuse to me. have done that, Should but done that? Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad they're not. Uh, Hope, where did you post that? You post the um, link. I don't know where it is. Uh, I think she probably did it in the chat and it doesn't allow links. So it just doesn't show up. Oh, man. YouTube just cancels those. Yeah, sorry, YouTube. Um, Nothing? I I was... I was... Yeah, I've been looking through. I can't find anything other than the Main Street Electrical Parade is going to... Well, is already done? Yeah, it's already done. I guess. Um and um yeah there's nothing uh henry cavill's going to be superman again um yeah he left the witcher which is upsetting i couldn't get into the witcher i i think it's because i didn't i didn't binge it yeah Mm, i watched i i I watched it too far apart and i got too confused by the non-linear timeline i think if i had binged it i would have liked it better that makes sense. I you know, it's what I did with season two. I sort of dropped out in season two. I just don't care. I guess I don't care. I don't know. Hmm. But I did finish Andor, and uh, I I loved it. Oh, it was great. A- episode episode ten. I I I when I watched it last night, I texted the uh, the Bantha the Bantha boys mm-hmm. and said, "I'm I'm legit like cheering on these people. Like it it, it oh, so good." It was so good. The, the entire series has been great. Oh, it's been great. But like, I, I did have a problem with with something in season ten. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Maybe, uh, maybe the next secret show we can talk about it. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I, I because do I, love. I had, a, I had a big problem with it. No, oh, okay. Well, we'll talk about it later. I would love. There's there's a video out there of um, the woman who plays. I can't remember the character's name because I can't remember any character's name who isn't on Andor. <laughs> um, but the woman who plays the um, Imperial Security, uh-huh. the, ISB, the ISB person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she, she talks, it, it's, a, it's a great video. Look it up. It's on starwars.com 
where she's talking about how you want to root for her and and it came up on Banff and Milk on their last episode when they were talking mm. about episode nine where they're like you kind of want to root for her but you also realize she's a horrible person yeah <laughs> who tortures people for a living and she's like it's a it's a weird role to play because she she's deliberately doing this you want to you want her to succeed you want her to like be good at her job and 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 push past things but you realize what that actually means mm -hmm. is more death and torture yeah well it's interesting because the only reason you want her to be successful is because it's counter to what the empire is telling her what her her the people above her yeah yeah there's the patriarchy her. that's yeah. going on that yeah that and it's clearly like clearly well, doesn't value her sure and she's but it's more than that like she's fighting quote unquote the empire at that point like she's she's rebelling against the empire in that so you're like oh well we want her to win because the empire is bad but also if she wins then she catches everybody and that's bad so you know whatever it's like i always go back to breaking bad it's like everyone's rooting for walt but he was literally making meth. <laughs> like, right. You can't like, you know what I mean? You can't get worse. It's though. not you can't, that like, sympathetic. Right. But <laughs> it's when you have a bad character who's doing bad things morally and you want them to succeed, <clears throat> that's good writing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great show. Yeah. Um, that's it. I think we're done. I think so. That's it. Mm, okay. Well, uh, there we go. Good stuff. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you uh, got really hungry from our show here at the Turkey Leg Central or something like that. <laughs> I do miss the turkey legs. They're juicy, smoky. They're good. It's good stuff, man. I appreciate the turkey legs. God bless those Toms for dying. Maybe they're not dead. Maybe they just had their legs amputated. I mean, it's just a bunch of Lieutenant Dans rolling around going, <laughs> like weebles. Sort of wobbling around. Those wobbles, but they don't fall down. They don't. They don't have any legs anymore. Oh my gosh. All right, everybody. Oh Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hopefully next week we're going to be doing some in-depth. Uh, I haven't talked to Jeremy about it, so I don't really know if it'll happen. But hopefully it will. And then uh, the show after that, it's going to be uh, Beverly talking about why she cannot stand Disneyland anymore. And she's going to try to burn it down. Yeah. Something like that. Pretty much, yeah. That's... I actually don't even need to do the show anymore. You just did it for me. I just, I'll just play that <laughs> sound yeah. bite on repeat. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate it. Until next time, see you in the parks. There, there goes, goes Bev. <laughs> God damn, dog. What is your problem? I'm exhausted. I don't know. Why? I'm Why are so you so tired? tired? Why? What have you been doing all day? What did you do last night? Why are you staying? Why are you staying up? Why aren't you sleeping well? What's up? You okay? I'm sleeping fine. I woke up early. Mm -hmm. Got the kids to school. Came. No one to work. Mm -hmm. I moved furniture today. I'm tired. Mm. Nice. Sounds kind of unacceptable. I don't know. No. Yeah, it's tiring. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Can't, can't stand it. <laughs> it's because you've never been to my house. You don't understand what getting furniture in and out of here is like. That's true. <laughs> I have it. You have to walk like a block to the truck to <laughs> load it in. <laughs> Uphill. Ugh. That sounds terrible. I it's don't do really that. terrible. <laughs> we were like, we were taking our old couch out and I was like, I forgot about this. I forgot we said when we moved in, if we ever moved out, we were higher movers. Oh, dude, mo higher so terrible. Oh. oh, I'm not doing this. Absolutely Worth not. Every what. penny. I'd rather just mortgage. burn this place down than <laughs> dude, load this so, crap out. That is what we did. We moved 30 miles away, but and we, we, we sort of had to because we were on a timeline where like our, they let us move into our house, I think, two days early because the people who bought our house were fucking dickheads. <laughs> like you got to remember out. they would not let us get one extra day. Yeah. And then they tried to sue us. But anyways. But then they um, lost, so there's that. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah. beat their fucking ass. That's... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Movers, dude. Movers. Hire movers. Well, I'm no not moving. What. But if I ever do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm 100% not moving. No. I'll it's... pack the crap out of this place. Sure. 
I'm not about that manual labor life. Mm-mm. No, because you can't. You can never do it in one go, and it's already stressful enough to go to like another place. You know and, what I mean? It's just and at this no, point, there's no I'm point. too old to ask my friends for help. My friends oh, are no. too old yes, because they you don't want to help you. They don't want to help me. And beer. Do it for pizza and beer, anymore. right? Sorry, no, we're not dude. 24 <laughs> anymore. No can do. Yeah, my no. body can't handle that. Yeah, higher move. Dude, I'm just get tired. Like, I first of all, go. Leave me alone. Go get out of my house. Because if you if you bring people over and you feed them and you give them beer, then the expectation is like, let's hang you, out. Let's you, hang you, out. Yeah. No, you, get you out. Plug the TV in or some shit. You got cable. <laughs> like, dude, I just I just want to. I have I 84 to boxes to unpack right now. Get out. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to look for like my, I don't know, whatever socks so I can go to bed. <laughs> I need to Tired. find the Advil box. Yeah, basically. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Man. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, basically, you just burn it down, and then you buy new stuff. Pretty much, yeah. That'd yeah. be great. I've be- I've done that. We When we sold our previous house, our the buyers, were, we said, do you want all of the furniture? They said, we love your furniture. And we said, okay, let's tack on some extra money and wow. pay for the furniture. And they said, no, thanks. And we said, you know what? keep it <laughs> we just wow. let them we we just just let them have it like, we, we let them nice. have all of our fur we said what furniture do you want and we let them keep whatever bed sets they wanted whatever couches they wanted for free because it was wow. cheaper than moving it <laughs> that's heck of funny yeah it that's was heck great of funny. that's heck of funny <laughs> <laughs> that's so heck of funny yeah um yeah You're man. A whore. i think it was hecka generous um hecka generous moving yeah. sucks dude moving is 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 you know what's worse advocating for yourself or your doctor or moving moving yeah moving yeah yeah i was gonna have to wait till like the 22nd to get a um an appointment with my doctor and uh it was talking i was like uh can you guys do something better like how about the 17th at 4 30 in Walnut Creek, and I'm like, "Fuck off!" Okay, I'll take it. But that means I'm, I'm means I'm commuter traffic going up the four at five o'clock. No, I don't. I bet this is what you got to do. It sucks, but you got to do it. It's it, it does suck. Yeah, um, and I I hate it as a yeah. as a person in healthcare. I hate the way that it takes three weeks to get anything. I guess I didn't understand why I don't understand like how you were misdiagnosed from a torn tendon, which seems calm down. Sorry. Uh, which seems pretty specific. Well, it started out with sciatica, which was actually closer to the truth. Okay. Um, because the slipped disc is basically impinging on on nerves that are causing yeah. this radiating pain but i i don't know i i mean the my my primary she when she checked me out she she moved my leg around and all these things and she's like oh that's not sciatica you don't have sciatica i'm like well i, I agree i don't have sciatica this doesn't feel like nerve pain and um and she's like no no you've got a torn tendon which was a nice thing to hold on to for a little bit and fun to say. <laughs> sure. But um but yeah, yeah totally mean, wrong. I want totally to wrong. uh I, I wanted to make fun of your torn butt. Yeah. But I can't do it anymore. Forever. No. I know. No, now I've just got a now I've got back pain like a like a like a regular pain. old man. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, I believe geriatric is the word you're looking for. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. if you need, if uh, if Brandy needs help, Taryn uh, is in the senior living community, so <laughs> she can give her she can give Brandy some advice on where to move you. When okay, it's time. how how to how to move the chair around? Um, no, when to when to rehouse you? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. I because you are getting old. Advice on Point. on bed sores. How, like how to properly knee. how to proper yeah. yeah how to turn you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so we sad. Have for that. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah, no, it it sucks. I did tell my 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 ortho doctor was like, so what's what are your 
what are your goals? And I said, <laughs> short term, a month from now, I'm going to Disneyland. I want to be able to uh, walk. Go to Disneyland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What are your goals? I don't know, to not have pain. What the fuck kind of question is that? Right. Something that can meter out treatment? Fuck off. My goal <laughs> right. is to be healthy, you asshole. Right. I, I want to not feel like this all the damn time. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the reason, I mean, the reason I'm in pain now is... Oh, all right. <laughs> the reason uh, I'm in pain now uh, is because I stopped taking meds that pills. made me feel Crushing like an pills. idiot. Crushing up pills. Flying Who the hell is FaceTiming me? Not me. Not was is it Bob Chapek? He was in the chat. Yeah, is it Dan? Is it Hope? No, Dan. Dan was uh, Dan was in the chat, and Bob and Josh. So I'm right. not entirely certain who uh, Bob and Josh were. Uh, well, I don't know, but uh, you know, Dan left, and then suddenly Hope appeared. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with yeah. Hope. In fact, in one of our chats, RGH sent me a, a message a few minutes ago and said. For real, who is Hope? <laughs> it's Dan. Uh, who uh, FaceTimed you? I have no idea. Answer them. No. Why would you answer somebody when they're just randomly face? Or can't you see their face before you answer? No, this one. Oh. Apparently, they've been calling me. It says JD, and it looks like that. It has a little like JD. emoji. Oh, Your they just face? misspelled JP. Oh, yeah. okay. I've been FaceTiming you. <laughs> what? But it's my butt. It's, it's been going. Jason misspelled calls. his name. It's, it's his name. One. Four, yeah, that's a lot, dog. Six. Answer it. Eight. Call him back. Eight calls tonight. Call him back and uh, just hold the phone up to the camera so yeah, I can see the right face. No, no, yeah. I don't want to FaceTime you. I don't know who you are. Yeah. Well, maybe you don't have to. Just put it up to your. But Good for that's content. Interesting that, that's in interesting that it. It says the name. Uh, yeah. JD. Yeah, that's weird. Hello, my beautiful woman. Hello. What you want? Abby? Who is this? I guess she doesn't know if it's her own kid or not. I'm so invested now. I know. Oh, no. Is this Kalia? Are we still live? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. JD is Josh go. tomorrow. <laughs> it's Josh tomorrow calling. I don't know who this is. <laughs> Hi Bev, I want to talk to you about your I want to talk to you about your last experience. I'm really <laughs> I think it's like one of Abby's friends prank calling me and they're about to get stabbed. <laughs> oh, she's not that oh. Day where they prank oh. call and do weird shit. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Do I look like I want to do that tonight? No. It doesn't look like See this bag? It has a friend down here. <laughs> There's many I got, bags. I got a bag with a friend. You know, I, I was getting prank called by people in um, middle school, and my dad answered the phone, and he pretended to be a cop. Ooh. And my friends, they're just my friend, and they, they like, bought it. And I'm going, I'm how dumb do you got to be? Like, you, you don't think I would have ever mentioned that my dad is a, quote, sergeant with the Pleasanton Police Department? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, but when you're prank calling somebody and an adult is telling you they're a sergeant, you're know. going to believe it. I know, it. but at the same time, it's like, <laughs> come on, dog. That's like definitely something that people would have talked about when you first meet. And I've known these people for like a year. I went to like elementary school with them. So it was like, they knew a lot about me. And you guys got fooled by that? <laughs> All right. I think we're done. I'm yeah. so done. Let's go. I'm okay, tired. Bye. It's late. This was a long show for not... For, for not having any, for not having a topic for, for I know. five minutes of content, like I yeah. said, no, I'm going to have a lot of fun editing it and then uh, putting it together, but not as much fun as I had editing the Halloween show, Eric. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. I'm Let's just talk kidding. about that more. No. I'm just kidding. You're fine. Everything Thank you. Great. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm over it. Yeah. I, you should be over yeah. it. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It happens. You know, we all get hopped up on the goofer every now and then. Yeah. It's fine. We all we all take too much baclofen and yeah. <laughs> baclofen? What about front lefin? Oh my gosh. I'm going I'm going to bed. I'm going Goodbye. Home. That Bye. was it. I'm going home. I'm going to bed. I'm doing everything. Yeah. Right. Good night. There's a lot that I'm that I've said over the years that I'm worried about people hearing. I'm gonna uh, I, I did record separate audio for myself. I'll upload that somewhere. All right.
just in it case. It depends you want if it. I need it. Sometimes I, I haven't used it yet. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've tried, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, upload it. We'll see how it goes. It just, yeah, bye, Bev. You don't got to stay around. It just depends. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'll I'm do it. Shitty audio or not. It's fucking yawning and shit. What the fuck is wrong with her? Oh, oh I'm sorry. She had bags on her bag. You're trying to work? I apologize. Whatever. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. No, we should just stay here. No, I'm done. <laughs> you go, can go. You can stay here. Go. I'll entertain my fan. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Uh, yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good night.